I've been interested in how to increase people's motivation for a long time, you know, and um, and there's a nice literature on that, and and part of it was as was created by uh, Latham and Locke, uh, Gary Latham and Edwin Locke, and they're looking at goal setting. That's how how they described it as a means to improve business productivity, and so what they imagine that you have two teams and you get them to set goals, say, and one team sets goals for their corporate productivity, and another team sets goals for their life, and then you match them head to head over some period of time and see which one comes ahead. And what happens is that the people who set goals for their life beat the people who set goals for the company. And so that's really, and, and then there's a variety of other literatures that support that kind of hypothesis, but it's, it's, it's very, very worthwhile thinking that through because what you want, if your company is structured properly, you want people in it who have a life, right? So they're aiming at things that they think are valuable because they're just not going to be motivated, period, unless they're aiming at things they think are valuable. And then you want their loyalty to the company to be nested inside that. So they have to see that working there, no matter what it is that they're doing, and, and you know, often jobs are repetitive and dull and difficult and, and challenging and all of that or you wouldn't be paid to do them, right? They're not all fun and games. Um, but if you can see that the less intrinsically interesting things that you're required to do are related in some directly intelligible way to goals that you regard as valuable, then that tags those activities with this dopaminergic kick that we were talking about earlier. So you need this hierarchy of values, right? Just like, here's what I'm doing with my life. Here's why my job is important to that. Or maybe it isn't, and then you have to quit and go find a new job, but that's fine. But, you know, because you might discover that too. And so we started um, trying to formalize this at the same time that I also realized something that I've never recovered from realizing, I think. So I teach students usually, for this class, it was third and fourth year students. And so this is at the University of Toronto. They're pretty smart kids. It's a hard university to get into, and they're pretty disciplined, and they're actually quite conservative, all things considered. And uh, I was teaching them about stories and about the fact that our life is a story with a goal and a purpose and, and a beginning point. And, and um, I was encouraging them to develop their own stories. So I had them write an autobiography and they really got into that. That was quite amazing to identify, you know, to break their life into epochs and then to describe the important episodes in each epoch, uh, both positive and negative and what they might do to reduce the possibility of the negative in the future and to capitalize on the positive, um, which is the purpose of memory, by the way, and then also to write a plan for the future. And so we, we formalized that. So the plan is, okay, first of all, you have to get yourself in the right mindset. And the mindset is you're trying to take care of yourself like you would care for someone that you cared for. That's a hard mindset to get into because people like their pets better than they like themselves often. <clears throat> and then you have to have a vision. And so the vision would be, well, okay, three to five years down the road, if your friendship networks were configured properly, what would that look like? If you were pursuing the career that would be appropriate for you and sustaining for you, what would that look like? How are you going to educate yourself? How are you going to take care of yourself mentally and physically? What do you want for an intimate relationship? And how are you going to handle temptations like alcohol and drug abuse? Because they take people down pretty frequently. So all you have to do is think about, okay, what could that be like if you had what you needed? Not some wild fantasy, but, but realistic and what you needed. So that's the first part. And then Okay, now write for 20 minutes about what your life could be like three to five years down the road if all of this came together. And then now do the opposite. So imagine all your weaknesses and all the ways that you can go down the wrong path. And then imagine that gets the upper hand. Then imagine where you are in three to five years. So then you get a polarity. Eh? It's like not this and this and yes this. So you can run away from the things you don't want and you can run towards the things you do want. That gets your anxiety behind you instead of in front of you, right? Because maybe you're going to go do something difficult and you're afraid of it. And then you think, well, if I don't do this, I'm going to end up there. It's like, oh, okay, that's <laughs> so terrible that this little terrible is nothing. So 
And then in the next part of the exercise, you turn that into an implementable plan, you know, and you write about why your life would be better and why your family's life would be better and why your community's life would be better. So it's like fully articulated. And we've tested about 10,000 university students with that now in three different locales. And we've increased the probability that they'll stay in university by about 30% and raised their grade point average about the same. And it's worked best for men who are most who were doing the least well. So in Holland, those were non-Western ethnic minority men, and they improved their performance enough to actually slightly exceed the Dutch national women who were at the top otherwise over two years. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Mm. It just blew us away. S a psychological intervention to cure what's in hypothetically a sociological problem. And so, and so that, that's a good example of how, and it, it, what, what blew me away when I was first considering this is I had all these students, 21 years old, and I realized that no one had ever sat them down, not even once in their entire career in education and said, okay, who do you want to be? Like, what sort of person is it that you want to be? Not, not job, it's like character. What do you want your life to be like? What should it be like? And what shouldn't it be like? And like, write about that seriously, like your life depends on it, because it does. 